happen. We gonna show them how to get it. Throw your hands up like this. Come on. Cause I found out that when you let God arise in your praise, your enemies will be scattered. Come on. Scream. Everybody lift him. Everybody lift him. Everybody lift him. Praise God, we're here at 2014. Everybody praise him. That was my friend Ernest Pugh with uh, one of his renditions that came out in the, live in the Bahamas last year. And we are delighted to be here in the year that the Lord's made 2014. I tell you what, never could have made it if it wasn't for the Lord in 2013. Because I tell you what, I had a lot going on. But God brought me through. Amen. I am so glad to be here. The View from the Pew and also 99.3 KTIA. And um, I have some special guests in the house. Welcome back, Bob. Am I a special guest? You are a special guest, co-host, cohort, everything else. Well, thanks. Yeah, I've been out there shoveling snow, you know. Hey, could you come to, come over to our place? No. No. I got too much snow. My mother would love you. <laughs> My mother would love you. Yeah. She, yeah, don't even think she makes so. You might get sick. <laughs> 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 and I got my sister in the house, a sister from another mother, Sharice Williams. What's up, girl? Hello, Reich. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? I am blessed and so happy to be here. Amen, amen. First time to the show, but I know you've tuned in before. Absolutely. Amen. You all are phenomenal. I wouldn't I wouldn't go all that far, but well, I'll take you know, it. You I'll know. take it. <laughs> fill me up. Fill me up. Yeah, She's I talking will. about me, right? Just That's me. right. That's it. That's Bob. right. <laughs> Bob is it's phenomenal. all about the Bob. <laughs> it's all about, hey, it's all about the Bob. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And we have your, your son, your love, your boo of your life, your baby one. Mr. Isaiah Newsom, how are you, sir? Good, how are you? I'm good. You got your big old smile going on, <laughs> your 2014 <laughs> smile going on. You Now, you, you're going to have to put your hands down because we got to see your face. You are a gift from God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. You're welcome. You're welcome. Welcome to the show. I'm so glad you came in. The first show of the new year. Whoop, whoop. And we're starting with you. We'll start with Chew, C-H-E-W, Chew. I, I caught that. <laughs> I tell you what, I am delighted that you guys came on. We're doing um, something special for today. We're talking about um, the gift of life. We're talking about giving blood. We're talking about um, special things that are going on in and around your family that have been going on for a, a long time. Very long time. Uh, 16 years, 11 yep. years? How? Isaiah is 16. 16 years old. Yep. So 17 years, because before life, All God, right. God before right. formed in the womb, God knew and had a plan. Amen. And uh, but what we're talking about in all seriousness here, it's a gift of life and the purpose that God has created here. And that is that uh, the fact that Isaiah um, has a rare form of sickle cell anemia. Yes, he does. And uh, people uh, like me that are 
inhale induced <laughs> <laughs> that have to pop in the tanning bed and find things out the harder way in life. I have to ask a lot of questions. And that's okay. Uh, so uh, I said, please, please, please come on my show and educate this brother from another mother. Okay. And so I'm glad that you decided to uh, step out, step in and step forward and just push in to persevere to educate me, if anything, about the gift of life and the gift of blood for Mr. Isaiah Newsom. <laughs> <laughs> the grin from the East Coast to West Coast. See, you know what? Did I was taught a long time ago, sing through your eyes, baby. And I could see it in your eyes. So you can't you can't fool me. <laughs> uh Sharice, give us the lowdown and we'll have to take some station breaks accordingly. So I, I may have to cut you off and we'll come back. But tell us about the form of sickle cell anemia that Isaiah has. Isaiah has sickle cell SC. Um there are, like you said, several different forms of sickle cell. Um, all unique in how they act in a person's body. Um, basically, it breaks down. He has shorter lifespan in his blood cells, so they die off a lot sooner than someone that doesn't have sickle cell. He also has what I refer to as traffic jams that occur because the cells are misshaped, so they get kind of clogged up and caught up and unfortunately cause him severe pain. And... As a result of that, he's basically lived um, a very shortened life as we would know it, as we would experience. Absolutely. Because he's not been able to encounter, endure a lot of the things that we take for granted. Absolutely. His, his experiences have been unique. He has not had the opportunities, as you said, that most of us have, you know, playing outside all the time in the summer, going swimming, going camping, you know, even school. He has literally missed half of his life from school, from K up until now he's a junior. Um, he attends school at the hospital, which he's been doing for several years now, just because of the pure amount of school that he misses. So basically the hospital has you first name basis, correct, correct Isaiah? Yes. And, and the, the, the teachers are your nurses, or you, it, is it a homeschool situation, basically? How's that happen? No, there's a classroom and the playroom, and there's it's actually a Des Moines public school teacher, and, like, the nurses, they're just nurses when I don't feel good. All right. And so they come in and they instruct you? and No, I actually get out of my room, and I go to a different room upstairs. Okay. Do you have to take tests? No. Hallelujah. <laughs> God is good, amen. <laughs> there is a God. <laughs> no. In in, uh, in all lightness in the situation, I bet that that's not a very fun situation. No. No. Um You know, back in the back in our days, Sharice, we there were, there was the movie The Boy in the Bubble. Do you remember that? Yes. And so it's Absolutely. kind kind of like that type of situation. It is. Um, he, he's lived in a bubble, basically. He's lived in a bubble. People are not allowed to come over to my house if they don't feel good. I don't care if it's just a common cold, because a common cold for us will put him in the hospital for a week or two. It's just it gets that severe. His immune system is compromised in that way. So I keep people away from him. Um, extreme temperatures, whether it be hot or cold, or if the temperature changes too fast, that affects him completely where he just, he'll go from la la la, laughing, playing, to boom, down and in the hospital. So we have to definitely be careful. Um, the classroom that he's in, it has other children or students that have ailments from A to Z and all different ages. So He's in a very small area with very few people, so definitely in a bubble. Uh, with the form of sickle cell anemia that he has, um, is there is there a cure? The only cure that they found for sickle cell at this point is a bone marrow transplant. So that's one of the things that we're looking into right now and will probably happen sometime next year. And... Educate me because I, I've 
Never had a transfusion. Hallelujah. Okay. Never need a bone marrow. Couldn't even tell you really what that is. Amen. Um, you know, but um, I do know that, you know, my father was a, a potentate in the shrine and that I know that the Shriners organization is very active in regards to stem cell research and bone yes. marrow transplant and blood transfusions and so on and so forth. So educate the general public that doesn't know the answers to those questions. What does a bone marrow transplant, what takes place? Well, What's needed? Your your blood is made, your blood cells are made in your bone marrow. Um, and because of that, Isaiah's bone marrow, unfortunately, is making cells that are not very productive for his body, the sickle cells. Um, with the bone marrow transplant, generally what happens is they use some type of chemotherapy and they completely wipe out all of his bone marrow and then they replace it with the donor marrow. Um, very serious, very, very serious procedure. Um, sometimes people do die. So this is something that Isaiah has been looking at for probably two and a half years at this point because of the severity and, and the complications that can arise from it. If the bone marrow from the donor does not take, his body cannot produce at that point any more of his own bone marrow. So he can be very sick. And again, there's fatality rates involved. So, um, Now, you've been a single mom your entire adult life. Absolutely. Raising two boys. Absolutely. And you got a grandbaby. Yes, I do. And you've been juggling um, your career. Um, I know that you worked in real estate and also at the phone company for 25. <laughs> I can't say that. You'll, you'll get me for lying. <laughs> You'll turn this saint into a sinner real quickly. <laughs> but you worked at the phone company for quite some time. Yes. And um, also juggling Isaiah's upbringing in, in regards to his health uh, issues. And now you've taken on a new undertaking that uh, you're working with philanthropic organizations for giving um, the gift of life, giving of blood and or donations. And uh, coming up on January 20th, yes. you are asking everybody everybody everyone to uh, step out of their comfort zone Absolutely. and step into giving uh, the gift of life of blood and or bone marrow can they donate blood ma bone marrow at this what we'll do at this drive on the 20th um, of January is test people for uh, to be the match for the bone marrow transplant um, you can give blood it only takes about 15 minutes for the process to give blood, which is giving life because it's not just people with sickle cell anemia that receive blood. I mean, that's the general public. Um, I think the stats are one out of every five persons will end up having to receive blood at some point in their life. Um, but the bone marrow portion of it, all they do is swab your cheek. They'll send that in for testing. And if you happen to be a match for someone, including Isaiah, uh, then you could be the person that extends his life and gives him a regular or normal, quote unquote, life. And I know that um, I was at uh, Union Baptist last week and, and one individual, she said to me, I can't donate um, blood uh but I did say you can donate of time and talent and also absolutely, your treasure. Absolutely. I said, write that check with a lot of zeros <laughs> behind it. Um, if a person wants to di give a uh, monetary gift, who would they make a, a donation out to? We have a website set up um, with Be The Match. They are the only organization that is allowed to do organ donation. Um, Be The Match is the national um, organization for that. So Isaiah has a page set up with them so you can donate. And is that www.bethematch.com or, or dot .org? Dot. We can look it up or, and get it back. Yes. It's probably dot .org. <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to that on the next segment, but we'll definitely have that here. And uh, so the actual name of the uh, drive is Give for Isaiah, correct? Yes. And it's not necessarily that people are going to give blood that day and that it's automatically be, going to be given to a bank and frozen for Isaiah Newsom. That is but correct. But it's giving it in his name. Absolutely. But it could be used for somebody else, it you or be. myself or even Bob. Absolutely. Or... And there's a lot of diseases, um, not just sickle cell, that tend to use quite a bit of blood product. But people with cancers, they're, they're a major um, population that uses blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Well, I tell you, God has started a new works in you. And Isaiah, I'm glad you're here. Thank We're getting you. ready to take a station break. I hear you're a singer. So we may get something out of you in just a little bit here. Amen. Okay. Praise God. If you have any questions, call us at 855-244-0077. We'll take your questions here at The View from the Pew. I'm glad you made it into 2014 with us. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this. Don't go anywhere. If you choose to obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached. And you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. All across America, there are countless numbers of people struggling with addiction and other life-controlling issues. Probably someone you know and love. There is a way out. There is hope. Transformations Treatment Center in Delray Beach, Florida, has a unique approach to substance abuse treatment. Call now and ask about our guaranteed success program or log on to transformationstreatment.com. Transformations. Change your life. Change your relationships transform your world yes now your favorite programs on webcast one live can all be watched and listened to on any android or apple device your phone tablet or ipad yes your favorite shows on webcast one live are available live or on podcast wherever you go let me introduce to you some of our great shows Shalom! Every week on Understanding the World with Rabbi David Kaufman, we'll talk about issues in the Middle East, issues related to the Jewish tradition and religious traditions in general, and keep you up to date on exactly what's going on around the world. You may know some of the story, but you haven't heard all of the story until you've heard it on Understanding the World with Rabbi David Kaufman and our special guests we have on every week. Like right now. Did you feel anything? Yeah. You did? I was dealing with some back issues um, due to the depression that I'm in, and right now they're gone. I have a sickness called Lyme disease. It was really bad, and I could have died up of it, but um, God healed me of it. <laughs> So when you want to watch your favorite Webcast One program, remember, there's an app for that. You know, there's an app for that. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Welcome to The View from a Pew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM. I'm your host, Reich Plekis, each and every Wednesday and Thursday from here on out on The View from a Pew.com and KTIA at 3 p.m. Join me as I present the greatest gospel artists, small groups, musicians, pastors, authors, apostles, and more, bringing to you the clear and concise word of God locally. Join me, www.theviewfromapew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM at 3 p.m. I hope you'll join me to spread the word powered by GFest and WebcastOneLive.com. We're back here at The View from the Pew and also 99.3 KTIA FM. And we're speaking with Sharice Williams and also Isaiah Newsom in regards to the Blood and Bone Marrow Drive, uh, a gift for Isaiah coming up on January 20th at 9 a.m., 9 until 4. And I bet you it's going to go a lot past 4. Trust me, this family knows everybody I don't know in uh, central Iowa, Missouri, and everywhere else um, at the John R. Grubb YMCA. And that is at 11th and College, 11th and Washington, here in uh, central city Des Moines. And come out. Um, Isaiah wants everybody to, to, Isaiah wants to give back to the community um, in the name of, in his name, uh, the name, uh, 
in the name of Blood and Bone Marrow in a drive on January 20th at 9 a.m. until 4 or whenever at the John Grubb YMCA. Um, I just sent over uh, to Ryan a, a copy of the link, the Beam Match foundation.org and we'll put that url up here on the the website so that you could see isaiah's actual page at the be the match uh, foundation please go out view that page if you'd like to give a donation of cash if you aren't able to donate uh, blood or bone marrow please give give abundantly over the abundantly it's a tax deductible gift it's the beginning of the year it's a new year and um it's going for an awesome cause it's going for a, a gift of life amen amen isaiah um if you could do one thing that you've not done what would it be mm. One thing that you've not done, that you've always wished you could do. Be a singer. Be a singer. Is there a special song that you like, a special artist that you like? I like soulful men artists. Like, I guess like Usher and like Justin Bieber. I just like men singers, you know? Like, I just feel like some of them... Like when I listen to interviews about Justin Bieber and my idol, Austin Mahone, like when they say stuff, it's just like, I just smile to myself because I'm like, I feel the same way about that. And it's just like, we have so many similarities. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Is there a special gospel song that you like that ministers to you? Like everybody sings his eyes on the sparrow. You know, is there a certain song you like? Um, I like because of who you are. Can you sing a couple bars for us? You want to sing a couple? Yeah. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Hallelujah. Nice. Do you sing in the choir at Bethel? Yeah. All the time, or does sometimes your the your kids sing inability. every third Sunday? Well, every time I'm there, if I'm not sick. Yeah. Do the kids come uh, visit you at the hospital? Yeah. Yeah. Um. I I work with a lot of gospel artists, Isaiah, and don't ever give up hope. Because you never know when you know something that God will just fulfill that dream. And you, but you have to remember who you're singing to, Amen. you know, and one thing I always say in the different events that I get to plan is that we're singing to an audience of one and that's Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter if there's 700 or 17,000 in that audience that, um, we're given a gift of life from him overly and abundantly that, you know, that's, that's who we sing our praises to is him. And, um, you have a beautiful gift and, and just don't ever forget that where it came from. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks so much. Um, Sharice with the, the drive coming up on January 20th, um, you're inviting everybody, um, whether they're able to donate, uh, time, talent or treasure to please come out, but more so to even get the word out to get the word out. Um, you know, I've invited people that don't even live in our state. And the reason that I've done that is because even if you can't, come to our drive specifically there are blood centers all over the country so we're asking if you're not in Des Moines you can't come to the one we're actually hosting to make an appointment go to your local blood center make a donation because one unit of blood generally helps three people um, Isaiah at this point is getting what I call a Band-Aid. He has blood exchanges every three weeks. Mm. What that entails is a machine simultaneously takes out his sickled blood, 
and then gives him donor blood, he generally receives seven to nine pints of blood each time. The human body holds 10. So I tell people it's kind of like an oil change that he's getting every three weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's one of the reasons that Isaiah decided to do this blood drive. He said, Mom, you know, I received so much. God has been so good to me. He gives me life. And he gives me life through people that are willing to donate their time, to donate their blood for me. So I want to do something to give back. And I'm like, okay, what about a blood drive or something? He's like, that's perfect. And that's when we started to plan this blood drive. He wants to do something that gives back, even though he can't specifically donate. He wanted to do something that he knows helps people. You know, when he's in the hospital, there's a lot of kids and he sees they're all struggling. And so many of them are going through similar um, situations where they're getting blood transplant transfusions and having exchanges, receiving platelets, all of those different blood products. So he wanted to help them, too. So this is not just about Isaiah by any means. Amen. Um. In regards to the actual planning, did you sit down with somebody at the Blood Bank of Iowa or um, how did that happen? I mean, did somebody just pop up and say, boom, I can do a blood drive <laughs> this week, you know? What we did, we contacted, contacted LifeServe, who is the blood center here in Des Moines and in Iowa, actually, and um, talked to a really cool lady named Michelle Couture, who has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, She said the first thing we needed to do was get people to sign up and say, yes, I'll be there. And because of the overwhelming response that we received, they were like, wow. So at that point, we had to decide on a venue. We thought about it. And we decided to choose the Y to ask them because the YMCA promotes health and well-being. And we wanted to be something in that nature. Contacted the director of the Grub Y and they were willing to sit down and have a meeting. And they said, we would love to be your host site. So that's kind of how it came together. And God has been blessing this thing every step of the way, every step of the way. We have just... We have been so excited about what's happening. Well, I know that I took 52 posters and drove them all around the city. Yes, you did. And gave them to all the pastors (laughs) of the churches for you, Isaiah. So I I did my little share. Uh, I won't actually, uh, I don't think that I'll be here on the 20th. I'm planning to try and be there. Um, But um, I've... uh, said that I'm I'm going to step up to the plate and do my part as well. Um, I have to be honest, I didn't, um, I know somebody else who has sickle cell anemia. Um, I uh, have contacted her and um, asking her if she can step out of her comfort zone as well. Um, you know, you just never know until you know if somebody is comfortable. And by you coming out of your comfort zone today and, and just partaking in this interview, you are changing somebody's life by making a difference and educating somebody like me, an old goat, you know, <laughs> Bob's a little bit older than I am. Not Ooh, much. But <laughs> Bob, are you going to take that from him? <laughs> just a little bit older. I, I just but, don't look older. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but by educating us, you know, you really opened our eyes. And um, a lot of times people just think it's about money. And this time it's about life. And so um, I'm, I'm really glad that you did that. Um, and God is the giver of life. He's the author and the finisher. Amen. You know, he's the alpha and the omega. But, um, you know, I'm glad that you, you stepped out of your comfort zone to do that. We'll take your questions at one 855 0077 If you have any questions for Isaiah or Sharice. Bob, do you have any questions here? I'm getting hit by one right now, so I've got to read it because I don't have my contacts in. Go ahead, read it. Go ahead. You got anything? No, go ahead, read the question. (laughs) Um, uh, People that are from a foreign country that have moved here, that have been here for a year or less, is there any type of screening to the background that needs to take place before an actual donation can be made? No. Okay. That's one of the um, 
misconceptions. You know, there's a very small percentage of the population that is actually don't able to donate, that they'll actually use their blood products. But the blood center does all of that screening. So come out and donate. You don't know until you've given. So the screening actually takes place at the time of the donation. No, the or... screening will take place when they process the blood. Um, when you come out to donate, you'll just fill out a form uh, saying that you're willing to donate, and then you give your blood. Okay, I'm answering them right now, too. So uh -huh, I see you typing. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to <laughs> yeah. keep it brief. I don't have my contacts, and it'll be talking in tongues here real see, quick. He doesn't have his glasses. Call I don't have my computer. <laughs> I was looking also that uh, January 20th is Martin Luther King Day. Yep. Was that planned? Yes. Yeah, look, look at that. Look at that. Okay. And um, do we have the uh, Life Serve poster? Ryan, can we put that up? Uh, here's a little bit of information in regards to uh, the drive coming up on January 20th. Um, they are working with Life Serve. Life Serve here in Central Iowa. Uh, their number is 1-800-287-4903. And here's uh, Give for Isaiah. It's on the web that we're showing right now. It's Monday, January 20th, 2014, the year of completion. Amen. Right. Amen. We're Thank looking you. for a cure. 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. or until God is done with that event at the John Grubb YMCA. That's at 1611 11th Street here in Des Moines. Uh, the grub where Miracle Life Family Church was birthed. I just have to say that. A little, <laughs> little biased going in there. Um, but also you can contact LifeServe Blood Center at 800-287-4903 or www.lifeserveBloodCenter.org for more information. And they will give you a plethora of information. I see that there's things on here on age and alcohol, antibiotics, blood pressure, blood transfusion, cancer, cold, diabetes, double red cell donation criteria, drugs, medications, travel, weight, tattoos, vaccines, pregnancies, so on and so forth. We're going to take a caller right after this station break. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Tune in, turn on, turn it up in Jesus' name. We're going to come back more with Mr. Isaiah Newsom. <laughs> and uh, caller, stay tuned. We'll be right back after this break. We're going to get ready to have some church, I can tell right, right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, <laughs> it's a new year, a new season to walk in our destiny. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so glad you're here. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this at 99.3 FM and WWW, The View from the View with Right Clackus. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm administrative manager. I'm the senior technician. I'm Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do, and if we guarantee it's gonna be a good experience for you, or else it's free. What type of work do you think we're going to do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you going to say that to a client? No. <laughs> You don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're gonna be listening. They're gonna wanna know what your challenges are. Then they're gonna come and give you options and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family. You know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now and then leave. 
and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed the day. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me. But is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did is perfect. It's great. <laughs> Keep going, though. I like this. <laughs> just give us a try. I'm going to take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed right or it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. Welcome to The View from Pew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM. I'm your host, Reich Plekis, each and every Wednesday and Thursday from here on out on The View from Pew.com and KTIA at 3 p.m. Join me as I present the greatest gospel artists, small groups, musicians, pastors, authors, apostles, and more, bringing to you the clear and concise word of God locally. Join me, www.theviewfromapew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM at 3 p.m. I hope you'll join me to spread the word powered by GFest and Webcast One Live.com. We're back here at 99.3 KTIA and www, the View from the Pew, with my guest, my special guest, uh, Dr. Sharice Williams. All right now. A prophesying. <laughs> 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 and Mr. Isaiah Newsom, I have to say that God works miraculously and in strange ways. I'm just going to give this quick little testimony that I worked for the phone company for a very brief moment. And uh, it was about a year and a half, yeah. something like that. Oh and Sharice and I were in training together. You had already been there like nine years or something like what? that in a different <laughs> department. And you and I were in training in the sales and service center. And Lord help us. You and I were next to each other. <laughs> and um, I had just come out of the mortgage industry. Yes. And um, you and I, we were, we were blessed. And bonded immediately. Blessed and bonded immediately. Man. And then they walked the coaches into the room of who may be our supervisor, our leads. Yes. Is that supervisors or leads? What are they managers. called? Managers. Mm -hmm. And I said, ooh, ooh, shambala, 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 shambala. <laughs> and you're like, what, what, what? I was like, that's my boss right there. Right that's there. my boss. Right there. And, 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 um, and you're like, you're, are you sure? Are you sure? And I'm like, oh, really? yeah. I said, that's well. my boss. I said, she is anointed to to uh, to be prophetically profitable. I said, I want to I want to be under her. I want to be on her team. Yeah. I said, I'm going to learn. I'm going to profit. I said, I'm going to be blessed beyond measure. Hallelujah. Right. And, and I it, said, let me tell you a little bit about that one right there. <laughs> and that was your mama. My mama. Your mama. Sure your mama. Did. Absolutely. And now I call her mama. Absolutely. And I know she's listening. Hey, mom, what's up? Can I get the car keys? I know you got a big old beautiful Cadillac sitting in the driveway. <laughs> Two. Two, yeah, she all right, all, all right. right. <laughs> so she was a blessing. I, I love her. You know I do. Yes. And then, then she sister, is a phenomenal Sister woman. Delicia, I, I mean, the whole family has oh, adopted yeah. me. So I am so blessed. Amen. I am so blessed. And Mr. Jesse and Mr. Jesse and Jelena, and I mean, the whole family, family. all 95 of you. Yes. Look, and then some. And then some, too. <laughs> I mean, we have a caller on the line. And uh, Ryan, we'll just go ahead and take them. You don't even have to intro them. I. I just receive it as God. So, right. hallelujah. Welcome, caller. Who do we have? Hello. Hello, hello. Who's this? Oh, this is Craig Farley Sr. I know you, Craig Farley. <laughs> uh, 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 one of the first guests from The View from the Pew. How are All you? Right. Guys, good. How are you guys doing? Good, good. Yeah, just, happy uh, New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah, happy New Year to everyone down there. You, Reich, and uh, of course, uh, Reese and Isaiah, and even Bob. Oh, oh, good. Even and me. even Bob. <laughs> I love you, Bob. Yeah, I, uh, I was calling today. I, I'm obviously enjoying uh, the show. Hallelujah. And I wanted to uh, ask Reese. Um, obviously, she needs to be commended for being a single parent and raising kids. And we know that uh, brings its own particular set of circumstances. But does she have some advice for other parents who might be dealing with uh, similar circumstances in terms of her and Isaiah's situation? Because she obviously handles it very, very well. And maybe there's some listeners out there that might uh, be interested in knowing how she deals with her circumstance. Amen. 
Well, first and foremost, it's my foundation in the Lord. I give all praises and all glory to him because without him, I would probably be in a corner, rolled up in a little ball, rocking back and forth saying, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. <laughs> anyway, so that's, you know, I, I am just blessed because my parents raised me in church. They gave me that foundation. I was then able to give that to my children, which, you know, definitely makes things a whole lot easier. I have two sons. Uh, my oldest son is Isaac, who is 20. And with all the time that I have spent away from him or had to shove him off to my parents, you know, when Isaiah has been in the hospital, he has not once complained. He has not showed any envy or jealousy about the time that I have to spend with his brother. Amen. So... Then we look at Isaiah, who gives me strength every day because he endures the pain. I'm there, but I'm definitely not going through what he has to go through. And when I tell people he's probably been through more than any adult that I know, that's real. When I look at all the hospitalizations and with sickle cell, it is severe pain. If I tell you the amount of medicine that he's on when he's in the hospital, it would it would actually put us into cardiac arrest. Mm. But he's there. He's still able to talk, have conversations. He smiles. He laughs even through his pain. So that's what keeps me going. Patrick has a question here, and it, it is, uh, what is the percentage of sickle cell anemia that may be attracted to African Americans versus the white population? Um, the white population, it's, it's definitely a lot smaller. It's maybe a 0.5%. Uh, the history of sickle cell, it comes uh, from people that are more in Mediterranean areas. It was God's way of helping people not to get malaria. Um, when mosquitoes infected with malaria bite you, you know, it, it can kill you. But the sickle cells the malaria can't live in. And that's, you know, the other part of that, his blood cells die off a lot faster. So it's people that come from those more tropical areas that have, um, over time, created that defense mechanism to fight off the malaria. All right. And what is the percentage of, um, do you know any type of percentage of sickle cell cases reported in Iowa currently? Not in Iowa. I know that we are 3 to 5% of the population, and the sickle cell population is even smaller than that. So across the United States, I want to say last year it was reported anywhere from 90 to 100,000 cases of sickle cell. Um, that's as far as I know. So basically a city the size of Ames, Iowa. Right. Wow. It's a very small population of people when you look at it in the United States now, when we go to other places, it, it, you know, will grow obviously because they are in those climates that actually need the disease to survive. Is this trait something that's passed on from generation to generation or skips a generation? So I would say Isaac probably does not have sickle cell anemia. Right. And so is this for a trait that comes from the husband's side of the family, the w wife's side of the family? How does it, how is the trait passed? It is can it affect men and women equally. equally? Okay. Um, sickle cell is definitely something that it happens. I think the stats are one in every five kids. My children's father is the one that carries the trait, and he has five children, and Isaiah is the only one out of those five Lord. that ended up getting it. So, My Lord. The special child. <laughs> the special child. That, that that means you have a special calling on your life to do what you do. Amen. I believe it. Sing through your eyes, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the next Sunday's best. All right. With Isaiah Newsom. <laughs> you know, I know Josh, Joshua Rogers. You know who that is? No. Mm, that's your homework tonight. Okay. Get on your mom's phone or your phone. I see you got a big old phone there, too. It's just an iPhone. Uh, just an iPhone. Well, Big Daddy Reich's only got just an Android. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to look up Joshua Rogers. He's not that much older than you. Not right now. That's your homework. You got it. Joshua Rogers, you're smart. I know the whole whole family. You're all straight A students. I know all your grandmother gives bragging rights on all of you. 
She's like, my 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 Jess is going to law school. My, oh, yeah. Yeah, I know the whole I know the whole kit and caboodle of you. So, but that's your homework for today, Joshua Rogers. Okay, so we'll get you hooked up. Any questions you have? Nope. Nope. You have you want to ask Bob? He's the smart one. I'm just the good looking one. I, I need to ask are you on Facebook. Hmm? Are you on Facebook? Yes. Oh, so I can look him up and friend him. There you go. All right. He's not a stalker, I promise you, Cheryl. <laughs> I promise you. We've done the background check. <laughs> We're having some church here at 99.3 FM and KTIA, the View from Pew. Tune in. Turn on. Turn it up in Jesus' name. We'll take your questions at 855-244-0077. Call Isaiah. This is not about me. It's about him. Amen. Amen. Let me let you in on a little secret. You ready? Always try to do business with people, not places. Especially if you seek honest Christian business people. And when it comes to my car, I really need to trust who's working on it. Now, my family is so blessed. A few years ago, we found a family-owned automobile repair shop that operates as a Christian business also. Open, honest, Reliable, trustworthy. It's Amco on Hickman Road in front of Kmart. And it's a family-owned Christian operating business. This family treats your car as if it was their car. Everything from oil changes to transmission repair and everything in between. So the next time you feel the need to be at peace with your choice of who you can trust with your car, give Amco on Hickman a chance to serve you. And tell them Max sent you. All across America, there are countless numbers of people struggling with addiction and other life-controlling issues. Probably someone you know and love. There is a way out. There is hope. Transformations Treatment Center in Delray Beach, Florida has a unique approach to substance abuse treatment. Call now and ask about our guaranteed success program or log on to transformationstreatment.com. Transformations. Change your life. Change your relationships transform your world. If Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. All right, we're back here at The View from the Pew with my special guest, Isaiah Newsom, and also Sharice Williams, and my co-host, Bob Montserrat, 2014. 2014 and not causing you any trouble yet. Yet. Straight from the horse farm. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, okay, we'll take your questions at 855-244-0077 as we enter our last segment here at The View from the Pew. Um, Isaiah, what do you want to be when you grow up? A doctor. Shut the back door. A hematologist. A hematologist. That and now I know what that. Now that's a person that works with blood. I know those questions. I know yeah. those answers. Um, and so blood does not scare you. Well, kind of. It's overwhelming. Like when I get my exchanges, it's just like overwhelming when you see a lot of blood. But it doesn't really bother me that much. Okay. So. An oncologist is someone that helps with cancer, cancer more. patients, right? And then a hematologist is more like a blood disorder kind of doctor. Mm. All right. And so, where do you want to study? University of Iowa. Of course. <laughs> you know what? I can't stand none of you. <laughs> Don't hate. Right? Except for you, Cheryl. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> What a kiss up. <laughs> oh, I, I don't have to kiss up. I deliver Garrett's popcorn to you her. You are so right. I, tell you what. I have yet to get a bag. Mm. Bob, have you received a bag of Garrett's yet? From... No. He hasn't yeah. asked. Let's see. I want some. Okay, you come down to my car right after this, okay? I'll see. I'll get you to hook up. You like caramel corn? Okay, I got you. 
<laughs> I got you. Don't share none, neither. I will. No, 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 no. Charge a dollar a handful. Okay. It, this is all about profit and income. I have okay. to teach you quickly. All right? Sometimes you just do things out of love. You love your mom. Give her a kernel. <gasps> <laughs> it's addictive. We need to, this is the year of addiction breaking, and we're not going to cause any new addictions. <laughs> Amen. The caramel corn Amen. is like crack. I tell you what. I, I know. I had so I much of it in the car coming back, and I just don't even eat any of it anymore. See? It's just like I am delivered, set free. Press down, shake it over. You know, I'm like, get this out of my car. Get See, ye out. Just wrong. It is. I think we got another caller, so we're going to take a caller here in a little bit, I think. Um, and um, so you want to be a doctor? Yes. And I know you're smart. Thank you. I know. Just say yes. Yes, I am, right? Yes, I am, right? <laughs> <laughs> the whole family is. Who's our caller? Who do we have here? Hello, caller. Operators are standing by. Caller? M Michelle? Oh, Michelle. Call back in. Anyway, we'll come back when they call back. So um, you uh, uh, want to go to the University of Iowa. Of course, you're going to go on full grants and scholarships so your mom doesn't have to pay for you to Amen. go to school. Praise Hallelujah. God. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> and, and make your grandmother proud. Yes. And buy her a big old house because I know she likes to cook for the holidays. Yes. So, Michelle, do we have you back? Uh, not Michelle, Cheryl. <gasps> oh. What's up, Mom? <laughs> Can I borrow the car keys? My engine blew on my Lexus. <laughs> you know, after the 10th time you said my name, I said I better call you. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't answer my question. I really do need to borrow the car keys. <laughs> Hi, Granny. Hi, Zaya. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Mom. How are you? Thank you. Happy, I'm New wonderful. Happy New Year. What you got Happy. for us? I just wanted to tell you, first of all, like, thank you very much for all that you're doing to help Sharice mm -hmm. and Isaiah get this broadcast to as many people as possible. And I appreciate all the driving that you're doing, especially the popcorn. <laughs> uh, and I would like for Isaiah to let people know from his own point of view what he wants to happen, you know, how he feels about what's going on. And, and just, I want Isaiah to, just to speak. Quit laughing, Reich. I'm not laughing. <laughs> about the blood drive? No, just about having sickle cell, what it means to you. Um, when I was three, I was diagnosed with a blood disorder called sickle cell anemia. And... I go into the hospital sometimes, but I always get out because God heals me. Amen. And it just, it affects my life because like one department, social department, how it affects, affects me, but I have missed a lot of school. And so I have very little people I can call truly my friends because I haven't established like those true bonding friendships yet. So it's just kind of hard to go back to school after you've been gone for nine weeks and then everybody's asking you, where you have you been, where have you been? And then I usually just, I know this is bad, but I lie. I usually say I'm on vacation, I was on vacation because I don't like them treating me different because I was sick. Like in fifth grade, my mom gave a presentation about sickle cell and told like my whole class and just people treated me a lot different and like I just want them to treat me like a regular kid because I believe I'm a regular kid. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm going to say a quick prayer, Isaiah, because God is a healer. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, Father God, um, this is a year of new beginnings. Father God, you are the author and the finisher of life, Father God. We just ask that you breathe anew in Isaiah today, Father God, that uh, you take Isaiah and 
set his feet on the, the solid ground that you set his entire life on, Father God, and let him be that beacon for other people, Father God. Father God, let him be the voice that people hear in the wilderness, just like you have been for him, Father God. Father God, let him persevere in your name, in your sight, and let him let him seek you first and always as he has, Father God. Father God, you have been a friend of the friendless, Father God, and let him know that he can call upon you when there's nobody else to call upon, Father God, and that he'll know that he'll know that he'll know that you are always there for him, Father God, that it's not the person to the right nor the left that's beside him, Father God, but it's you, Christ Jesus, that he can call upon. Father God, we ask that you anoint a time such as this, Father God, and anoint January 20th at the John Grubb YMCA that every person that shall hear this broadcast or see the poster shall come out and support overly and abundantly the blood and bone marrow drive in the name of Isaiah Newsom. Father God, we ask that you uh, anoint every eye and every ear that sees the posters that they shall give overly abundantly of their time, their talent, and their treasure. Father God, use the highways and the byways to broadcast this message of life, a beacon of hope in your name, Jesus Christ, for you are the author and the giver of life, Father God. We ask that you heal his body from the crown of his head to the bottom of his feet, Father God. Gird him up, Father God, in Jesus' name. We thank you for a time such as this that we can rejoice and call you our Savior. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Isaiah, thank you so much, Sharice. Thank you. You know what? Isaiah, we're going to have you come back after January 20th. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you and your mom to pray for me on January uh, 7th and 8th. I'm going through something too. And you're a strong person. And hang in there. I'm going to pray for you too, okay? God bless you. God bless you too.